Today we're going to go over so many tips and tricks on growing tomatoes, cucumbers, watermelon, and peppers. But look at this. This is what happens when you use soil from another container. Look at this. Do you know what this is? So let's walk through an update on the chairs that I had set up with the 50 cent paint and the cheap $5 totes at the time and see how I'm growing fruits and vegetables this year, which will be different from last year because every year it's different and it's exciting and you make it the way you want. You're going to see so many tips and tricks here. I think you're going to be running out the door to get into your garden to go copy some of these and do it. And if you do it better, let me know. Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California and I'm gonna do an update on my chair garden. I think it's doing fabulous. We've got a couple issues in here that are just a disaster, but all in all, the other stuff's doing good and well, nothing's perfect. Keep that in mind when you're gardening. There's always gonna be downfalls. And, you know, you just keep going and you learn from your mistakes and if they're not mistakes, it just might be the wrong time. Let's go tote by tote. Here I tried watermelon. Let me show you what's going on. Nothing. See how they're fizzling out? I tried to make sure that the snails or the roly polies didn't get them, but you know what? It wasn't that. We are still so cold at night and foggy that watermelon likes the weather warmer. So because of the cold nights, it's not working and that's okay. I have more watermelon plants we can put out later. Here, this is doing really good. Now this is an eggplant. It did get attacked as you can see. Let's take this off for right now. And we'll go over all the different hoods I'm using by what looks like maybe roly polies, but it could also be snails. And that's okay. If it doesn't make it, it doesn't make it. Look what's coming up next to it. A volunteer tomato. If that does better, maybe I'll leave that, but that will leave two tomato plants in here, but that's okay. Now this tomato plant, I believe is a volunteer and why? Because I did not mark it. I believe I took it off my deck. It was real tiny and it loves it here. And I'm trying to do something here. So we'll see how this goes and we'll discuss more on that later. Right now, let's talk about the irrigation tubing here and the same thing that's here. The only reason this is up here right now, even though it will be a trellis later, is for sunshade. Now this is really important. We're gonna be in the 80s coming soon. And then we'll be going in the 90s. Do you see this in the 90s? This leaf is in shade. Half of this leaf is in shade. By creating this sun shade, sun shade all day from sun up to sundown, none of the plant can scorch that bad because it's constantly moving. See how my hand will create shade? Well, that's what this is doing. And I'm really contemplating if I'm gonna add in another four or five of these irrigation tubings, being that they're so cheap and would take me seconds to put in there, but we'll see how it goes. And if we hit in the 90s, I will. It's not gonna shade the plant out too much. It's gonna give it exactly what it wants all the sun it wants, but it's also gonna give it shade. So if it has tomatoes on it, as they start to form, the tomatoes will get sun shade, sun shade. You won't get those burn spots. A lot of you trim your plants. Now by trimming them and trimming off the leaves, when you trim off too many, well, that's when your tomatoes will start to burn because normally the tomatoes, see how they're covered by the leaves? The leaves actually protect them. And sometimes we don't have a choice but to trim them. But by creating this with the irrigation tubing, you've now created exactly what the plant is doing. So if you're a trimmer, well, this will work for you. And keep in mind, you don't need to let your indeterminate tomatoes be 10 feet tall. I don't want my tomatoes 10 feet tall, but with the irrigation tubing, you can still have them 10 feet tall, but you can have them coming back to the ground. And that's what I'm going to do. You can always trim off the top and they will send out side shoots. I only trim where it needs to be. Like I've trimmed down on the bottom because I want a good airflow. Now this tomato, there's another one coming up, is up against the zucchini that's here, but that's okay. It's fine. The zucchini has its own container, which is the 18 gallon tote. And the tomato has its own large, let's say two gallon container in there. And we've got a pitcher in there. Let's see if we can show you that. Look at that, that keeps breaking down so fast. And you know how I do the pictures, go watch the video. That is a constant food source. And that's why these plants that are only what, less than two weeks old are already full of fruit because of that pitcher. That's a big thing. Now the soil, as you can see, has dropped way down, but doesn't matter. It's got all the roots, this squash plant in there, cause it's got its own 
room, its own apartment, and that's got its own room and everybody's gonna be happy. Now the tomato plant will throw some of its feeder roots out of that pot that it's in here. And that's really good because it's gonna grab some of the food from the pitcher. So I may be adding more pitchers as we go along. So that is doing really good. Now let's go back here. Look at this, my little pepper has grown a pepper. Is that funny? And there's more peppers coming everywhere. Now I saw in the beginning it wasn't doing that good because we've got the wind that comes up the canyon. Peppers don't like a lot of wind. I've learned that as I was growing. It's something we all will learn as we work with our plants. So I made this hood. Now what I do at night, let me grab the hood so you can see. I put it on there. I'll show you when I'm done how I put it on, but it sits there. I don't want to swish my plant. I guess I can do it. I just drop it on and I usually leave it even all day. It creates a little sunshade and that is made from a tote lid, but you can use table mats and other things if you want any plastic you've got. And then I just covered it with a dollar store shower curtain and it only needed a small amount so I can make multiples of those and it's simply stapled on. But you could also use clips to clip on the plastic. Let's take this off because it's quite warm today. It doesn't need it. It's not for the heat or the cold. It's actually just to protect it from wind. And it did so well, obviously, that in a matter of two weeks, I've already got this giant pepper that now I have to wait till it turns red because it's an Italian pepper. Again, that has its own pot. That tomato is in this 18 gallon tote. Here, you know, some of this I'm still kind of deciding how I want to do it. I've got a walking onion there. This was already growing by freshening up the pot. The garlic chives are beautiful. And this is another zucchini that is just taking off. Got a lot of the leaf matter in there. You saw how I've done them. Just full of live matter from the, you know, from all my gardens. Leaves, green, brown, yellow. And so it was all stuffed in there. And I don't even know if I used any potting soil on the top. It doesn't look like it. It looks like it's soil from another tote. It's doing really good. Same thing here. Again, walking onions growing in here, and this is a yellow squash. Now, something did eat that one, so whether that will make it, I don't know. See, some of them have been attacked, and this is snail. So I have to come out here, and I just set them free out there and let them do their things, but I do have to look for snails. We've got a lot of snails. This is simply a geranium. See, that is just a new cutting, and I'm just starting it in there. It's the perfect place to do it. They seem to just grow roots when I put them in a pot and just put them in here, they benefit from all the microbes and everything in there. Same thing here, another yellow squash. Look at this. These plants are so young. Again, damage from snails, but you know, you just come out here and pick through and more garlic chives. Again, I may take these out later because they're in their own pot and I might put pitchers in there as the squash grows, we'll see. Then here I've got a tomato, isn't that something? And this is the sun gold. I'm going to be doing some propagating very soon because I'm waiting for the bottom. I want to trim the, I like keeping the tomatoes where you get really good airflow around the base of it. But I'm going to trim that off soon and make a new plant. I've got my walking onions back there and just a strawberry sitting in a milk carton that's covered in fabric. Another tomato in here and then another tomato here. Two tomatoes in this 18 gallon, but this has its own container. And this one is a black cherry. And this one is a brads that I grew from seed, doing really good. Another thing I was doing in the beginning is I made these hoods and I kept it covered from a little bit of a windbreak, as well as making sure nothing ate my baby seedling. Again, more geraniums that I'm just starting, just sitting them in there because I, I layer the dickens out of everything. And then here, let's talk about this because this is squash and this is cucumber. Cucumbers need warm weather. Again, like the watermelon, it wasn't doing good. So what I did here is I clipped on to all my irrigation tubing to simply put on a shower curtain. I'm telling you, I can't believe how good these shower curtains work. And this created a windbreak from down there coming across here. And now my cucumbers are taking off. Eventually the cucumbers will just take over. And then here is another tomato that I put here. This is a sun gold and I will be today doing more propagating on here and then I will trim that up. There is a big leader coming through there and I can either leave it or make it into a new plant. I'm not sure. And then last but not least, my watermelon here didn't make it either. There were three. We're down to one. It does have damage. That looks more like roly-polies, but it's just not growing vigorously. 
if it was happy and we had warmer nights, it wouldn't even mind the little bit of damage. It would just take off and grow, but they're fizzling out. These are tomatoes that are coming in. Let me see. Another tomato there. You can always recognize the tomatoes by the two straight leaves there and there. So I'll see, but I really do want watermelon in there. So that's kind of an update again. This is sunshade, sunshade. Oh, you really, if you're in the desert, put these up. Don't put up four, put up eight, put up 10. You're thinking, oh, it's too dark. It is not. It's not, and they're cool to touch, believe it or not. They last for a long time. Watch the video how easy it is to put up. And that's it. It is this easy and this fun to grow a garden. And look how easy it is to service. It literally takes me, I don't even think two minutes to water this. And now I've got pots all along the bottom. I'm starting geraniums. I've got celery growing there. I've got there, I've got garlic chives, more celery, garlic chives. I've got a celery and a geranium in there. Celery, garlic chives. Um, that pot is nothing. It was another just a ring I made. Now it's protecting that. But look at that. It's just a ring. I use that sometimes on seedlings. More celery, more celery, and more garlic chives. The easiest garden to set up. All you need are some chairs, some totes, and then layer the dickens out of it to make use of all your growing space. So I hope I gave you some ideas on how to grow a small garden in a small spot. So with that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow and listen to this over and over because I know I went over a lot of different tips that I know you can use. Bye-bye. Look at this. This is what happens when you use soil from another container. Look at this. Do you know what this is? It's red vein sorrel. Seeds were in there and when I use this soil, they're growing. Isn't that cool? I got free plants without even trying.